just a little sneak peek, uh, taken with an iPod, well, iPod Nano 5th generation because I don't, I'm lacking a little bit better of a, uh, video camera at this point, uh, just for the moment because my phone's charging upstairs. On the top here I have a SparkStation 10 with a 125 megahertz Ross HyperSpark, uh, with 256k of right through cache, or right back cache, I think, yeah, right back cache, and 416 megs of usable system RAM. Currently running OpenBSD 5.6 on an 18 gig SCA hard drive, SCA SCSI, and I'm using an adapter that's a little bit too tall, uh, and the, you know, well, the adapter end is a little bit two on the tall side for me to have the hard drive any further forward and that's making it hard to put the case on which has that metal shield there that I'm probably going to have to bend off so that I can get the case back on. I have to continue using the uh, same uh, case top and stuff. Got a little bit of damage here on the corner but that's how I got it. Uh, this was in the big uh, Sun Hall of Stuff that I commented on a little while ago on one of UXW Bill's recent videos at the time of this video. Um, interesting that it has ISDN and some sort of other adapter there, and they both use RJ45 of some kind. Uh, this looks like it's uh, M2 slots or mini M2 slots or something along those lines. Something similar. Okay, keyboard port, uh, combo serial A and B port. Up top, you got 13W3 from a CG3, which I kind of just dropped in there for no apparent reason. Uh, you got twisted pair 10 megabit coming from a an AMD uh, well AMD PCNet Lance chip on board. This is the Sun Lance driver in OpenBSD, and well, I don't know if it's the same driver for OpenBSD, but it's that for Linux. Uh, got a SCSI port there and the blanked off one for an onboard uh, 13W3 connector for some sort of a frame buffer on there. On the bottom, we've got my Spark Station 5, which is doing quite well actually for the most part. Um, this one does not have a frame buffer installed, but it originally came with a, a TGX uh, frame buffer of some kind, so I guess it was a CG6. Um, Got a Sun Happy Meal card in the top there. Sun Happy Meal Plus. Well, it's a true Happy Meal card because it has SCSI on it. It's only fast wide though, uh, fast wide single ended. And that's a 100 megabit Ethernet port right there. I'm currently using uh, the AMD PCNet Lance that's on board this one, which is doing quite well too. It's the Happy Meal card that I'm having some problems with because the Linux kernel that I'm using, which is 2.4, still has a little bit of a bug in it that I'm going to have to resolve at a later date and I'm going to have to diff it with um, the driver from 3 point, not 3 point, I'm sorry, uh, 2.6.32 I've, con I've concluded will be the one that I'm going to diff it with not anything newer because I have just for no reason um, as there is no frame buffer it's the same deal with that I'm uh, booting via serial console uh, so I've got that going, and interestingly enough, the onboard NVRAM chip still has a good battery charge and still holds uh, the NVRAM settings, so I've just been using it as is. The sound is provided from a CS4231 on board, which I do not have the module currently enabled for, but I should, probably, if I want to mess around with it. Uh, there is fast wide SCSI on board. At the same two ports there. Ooh, excuse me. It's kind of late in the night when I'm doing this. Uh, there's all the relevant information you need to know about the machine and of the other. And that's pretty much it. Uh, both have matching 18.2 gig SCSI drives for the most part. The SS5 uses um, it uses SCA as the SCSI bus, so I didn't have to really do anything except find mounts for the the, uh, 
the drive itself because I do not have one of the drive sleds to plug it in and slide it in. I ended up using some rubber grommets from a uh, DEC RZ28 drive that came out of some sort of a DEC VAX sort of a system or alpha sort of a system, I have no idea which. And that ended up getting scrapped because something had leaked inside and had gotten everywhere except for the upper bays so the hard drive was okay and I've tested this and the hard drive does work so that's going to be going to somebody in Ohio who really needs it for a vac station um, that's pretty much all I can show you for the most part there's nothing all too much interesting happening up here um, the only other thing that I can really show you is that uh, there is a floppy drive on the one, and that blinking light is actually the power light. And on the bottom here, I have the one which has a solid power light, because that's, I guess, how it works out. And there is a 2X uh, SCSI tray loader CD-ROM drive here, which I also got as part of my uh, big sun haul. So... That's going to be the end of this, since there's nothing really interesting or, uh, happening with this. I'll probably cut to a, uh, just a screen of both the systems running and see if I can, uh, get a video of that in, but probably won't. Who knows? So that may be the end of this. Um, next video I'm going to do in this little tiny series is going to be one of the desk sides that are on uh, that are upstairs one of them I have inside the house and the other one is actually in the garage being stored right now until I can get it out get a computer hooked up to it uh, via serial terminal uh, yeah, just a serial interface sort of thing and get a console going so that I can see what happens when it tries to boot um oh, yeah it is really really late I should be going to bed so, that's it. I'm going to go to bed. Oops, sorry. I'm going to go to bed, and I'm going to upload this in the meantime. And by the time I get up, people will have seen this, and people will have gone, Oh, wow, that's so really cool. And start asking me questions that I obviously probably can't answer. But you're welcome to try. Go on, stump me. <laughs> um, oh, yeah. Um, the Spark Station 5 has a Micro Spark 2. Uh, 110 megahertz, which is the fastest that they could come with, aside from the, uh, I think it was a, what the hell was it? It was a, I have no idea, not a HyperSpark. I don't think it was a HyperSpark. It was some sort of 170 megahertz chip, and it had a fan in built onto the die onto the top of the thing or something, and it was all weird. But the top one has a Ross HyperSpark, I know that for a fact. This one, that's what it was, it was a Turbo Spark, the 170 MHz version. Um, mine is not that, mine is 110 MHz uh, MicroSpark 2. It has 256 megs of RAM, which I will go into later, since that is going to be a separate video itself. In fact, I'm probably going to do an entire separate video on the Spark Station 5 itself, because there is a lot of uh, interesting uh, bits that went into getting this running. Uh, getting the information that I needed, and ultimately why I'm running uh, Debian Sarge and not running OpenBSD on it. Whereas with this, I am running OpenBSD for uh, various reasons. This one I'm running open... Okay, I'll go into it real quick. I'm running OpenBSD on this one because the NVRAM is shot on this one, and I have to replace the battery or do the mod, where I connect a battery instead of... Well, a, a, an external battery instead of the one that's on the clock on the timekeeper VRAM chip. Um, this one will boot OpenBSD without a functioning uh, real-time clock. However, the Spark Station 5, um, which is running Linux, uh, I cannot boot Linux on this because uh, Linux needs a functioning real-time clock in order for it to be considered a sane system or something. Well, a functioning NVRAM, so the PROM contents are valid. If the PROM contents are not valid, Linux will not boot. So that's going to be it. If you want to see more uh, videos of this? Well, you're going to anyway, but please go on ahead and comment and stuff because 
Uh, there's not a whole lot of videos on YouTube that actually go into the depths of sun stuff. And, well, getting, uh, getting modern stuff to run on it. So I'm going to make a, quite a series of videos about just, just my endeavors and uh, the trials and uh, tribulations of getting modern stuff going with these. Um, the Spark Station 10, I'm not really exactly sure what I'm going to do with it. All I know is that right now it's running OpenBSD, and it's going to be compiling some stuff for the next 24 hours, just so that I can get ERC running, because it doesn't want to boot, at, it doesn't want to, uh, uh, I need to get this, this, that, Ugh. it's just, uh, it's just a clusterfuck. That, that's the, the nicest term I can put it in, it's going to be a clusterfuck. As for with the Spark Station 5, all I had to do was uh, upgrade Sarge to Sarge backports, pretty much, and ERC uh, was able to be compiled 0.8.17 perfectly. Alright, so I'm going to end this, and I'm going to go to bed.